here we go. Here we go. I, I can already feel the dislikes coming at me, but uh, we're going to do it. What's up, everybody? My name is Adam Portress from a Hero Movie Podcast. We are normally a just an audio-only podcast, but uh, we started to get a couple subscribers here on YouTube. So I figured, hey, put up a video, and uh, you know, we'll we'll see if we can put more content out there like this. If and at least you guys like this. Yeah, but given the topic, I don't think a lot of people out there are gonna like this. I think they're gonna dislike it. But prove me wrong, internet. Prove me wrong. So HBO Max is about to make its way into a lot of people's living room. I mean, for the same price that you would be paying for HBO, a lot of people will just go ahead and make that an HBO Max or however the hell it is that it does. One of the big appeals about this HBO Max thing is that you get a lot of different titles from a lot of different properties, including a lot of Warner Brothers properties. You'd think they'd be able to do a better job having owned all the properties. Today we're going to talk about one of the big things that has come out in the news. They are going to be releasing the Snyder Cut. And I'm here to tell you guys today that the Snyder Cut never actually existed until it did. So let's get into a little bit of the history of Zack Snyder's Justice League to find out exactly where the timeline goes, because I think a lot of you out there just read headlines. You don't read the actual article, nor do I think you really understand how the movie business works. Now, I'm the first person to say I am not like a movie industry expert and everything. I just happen to know more than you do. <laughs> If it makes me a jerk to say that I know more than you, I guess I'm a jerk. Whatever, I don't care. So I want to do a quick history of uh, Zack Snyder's involvement with the Justice League movie. I'm not going to tell you where it started, how all this goes, but I'm going to give you a lot of the major points as to why he left, why Joss Whedon came in, the results of that, the campaign to then bring back the Snyder Cut, and of course what's going to be on HBO Max. So in March 2017, Zack Snyder had a family emergency. I'm not going to go into it too much because frankly, I just I can't even imagine. It's just it's absolutely beyond tragic and uh I don't want to have to get into that I, because it's just it's a little bit too much. Read for it yourself. And uh I do want to say at this point, you know, my my heart and sympathies go out to Zack Snyder and his family for what happened and uh what they had to go through. It's not even something that I could even remotely imagine. But I don't want to focus on the reason why he, uh, he left Justice League. I really want to focus on just the events that took place after he left and why you're getting what you're getting on HBO Max. So a lot of what I'm going to be uh, referring to here is the original article, Zack Snyder Steps Down from Justice League to Deal with the Family Tragedy. This is from May 22nd, 2017 by Boyer's Kit. This is just kind of a little bit of a breakdown as to what exactly went on from the original publication. In my mind, I thought it was a cathartic thing to go back to work, just to bury myself and see if it was the way through it, said an emotional Snyder in an interview Monday in his office on the Warner Brothers lot with Deborah, his wife, sitting by his side. So Zack Snyder says, The demands of the job are pretty intense and it's all-consuming. In the last two months, I've come to the realization I've decided to take a step back from the movie to be with my family, to be with my kids who really need me. They're all having a hard time. I'm having a hard time. One of the first things the studio floated was the possibility of pushing back the release date of the movie, but Snyder's decided against that. Snyder, after screening a rough cut of Justice League for fellow filmmakers and friends, wanted to add additional scene, so he brought Whedon on board to write them. But as he prepared to shoot the scenes in England, Snyder realized that it was not time to leave home. The directing is minimal, and it has to adhere to a style and tone and template that Zack set, says Warner Brothers president Toby Emmerich. We're not introducing any new characters. It's the same characters in some new scenes. He's handing the baton to Joss, but the course has really been set by Zack. I believe despite this tragedy, we'll still end up with a great movie. So Zack Snyder gets together, has a big giant thing for family and friends, and puts together a rough cut. Some may even call it an assembly cut, and we'll get back to assembly cut a little bit later. But he shows this to people, so his movie's practically done in the very roughest of forms. And like most Hollywood movies, he's got to do a little bit of something extra. They put everything out on the table, and they go, okay, we can get rid of this, 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 and this, and we need to plug up this area with this thing, and this thing, and this thing. That'll make the movie whole. So that happens with a ton of movies, especially big Hollywood budget films. No biggie. But here's the thing, he can't do that at this point because he had the tragedy in his family. So he hands the reins to Joss Whedon, who's already written the things that Zack Snyder wanted him to write, and now he's going to go film them. And according to Zack's you know, parameters and everything that he set for, you can't all of a sudden make it an animated film. So he's got to kind of stick to the template that Snyder put out. And that's what happened. 
It's as simple as that. I know a lot of people out there think Zack Snyder had some mega ultimate, like, oh, this is exactly what I wanted, some little version. So Justice League comes out and does so-so at the American box office and does pretty decent internationally. On a budget of $300 million, which, by the way, is like an insane thing. You remember when Waterworld was out and we were all like, $100 million? What? This is the most expensive thing? Now they're like, $100 million? Pfft and only made $657 million worldwide. But Adam, that's a profitable number! Uh, kind of. So really, to make a movie profitable in the old school Hollywood sense, you've got to make about one and a half times the actual budget. You've got the budget, and then the uh, budget that they're going to use for prints and advertising everything is usually almost half of what the actual budget is. So really, you need to get past one and a half times the actual cost of everything. So with Worldwide, they're pretty close, but no one's going to call this a hit. Compare this to Avengers Endgame, which had a budget of $356 million but then had a worldwide gross of $2.7 billion. A little bit of a difference. So the movie didn't pop like Warner Brothers really wanted it to. This was supposed to be DC's Avengers, but unlike the Avengers, they kind of skipped a couple of steps. They figured, hey, we're going to walk before we can run. Why not? And it didn't really pay off. It didn't have that emotional resonance that the Avengers movies had because we had previous movies. This one says, hey, you don't know any of these guys, but you love them all, don't you? Hmm. So the internet does what the internet does and speculates the hell out of everything. There comes this rumor that there's the three and a half, four hour cut that Zack Snyder has put somewhere. That's the assembly cut I'm talking about. Everyone does it. There's so many different cuts out there of everything where they just put everything down on the timeline and it's gigantically long and then they start cutting. That doesn't mean that that's the director's cut. That's an assembly cut. So what are you saying? The Snyder Cut doesn't exist? I believe that what we're going to be getting is going to be an actual different cut than what we got initially. There's even reports out there that they're spending something like 20 to $60 million to shoot more stuff or whatever for this, and that's fine. And again, you can call that the Snyder Cut, that's perfectly fine, but my point is, is that never actually really existed. You going in and shooting stuff later, okay, you're just adding more stuff in there. You can call it a different cut, but let's stop pretending that there was like some three and a half hour cut out there that Warner Brothers was just keeping to themselves going, no, you're going to hear Joss Whedon's version, not Zack Snyder's. We're keeping his precious all here to ourselves. <laughs> never happened. So the internet did what the internet did and they got a little bit antsy and they just decided to start hashtag release the Snyder Cut. You saw it everywhere. It was insane. Some of y'all getting crazy out there, you know, smashing stuff with hammers. And setting it on fire. Sag ich mal rest in peace. Slow your roll on that one, man. So I'm a man of my word, and I believe I made a promise. Here's the thing, I don't want to be called like some sort of Marvel fanboy. I do tend to like Marvel movies better than I like DC movies. But over at Hero Movie Podcast, we review all superhero movies. I don't care what it is, we're going to start reviewing that thing, man. And I like going to these movies. I own this movie on, on Blu-ray. It's I want everything to be good. Because it, it's nice for me. It's nice for me when I go into a movie and I go, I had a great time with that. I don't want to go in and say, wow, what a waste of two and a half hours of my time. I want to enjoy myself. I hope this Snyder Cut is great. However, I don't know that that's really going to be the case. I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed in what they see. And frankly, I think it's been built up so long at this point. You're going to be nothing but disappointed with what comes out. And again, remember, I want to like this. I hope I do like it. Please, Zack Snyder, please prove me wrong. I hope that you do. I'm just holding back a little bit of judgment, just reserving it, just seeing. We'll see. We'll figure it out. I want it to be a better movie, but what do you think? Do you think it's going to be better? Do you think that there's no way out, or do you think that we're going to kind of see the same thing again? I, there's a fear that I've got that it's going to be that as well. And honestly, I think at this point it's been built up so much, it can only disappoint, right? But then again, like I said, I hope I'm wrong. But I know one thing's for sure. We'll be covering it on Hero Movie Podcast like we do every single week where we review a comic book movie or a television show, relate it back to the original comics that it's based upon, and of course, one-to-one -one with Sylvester Stallone. Uh, check that out wherever you find podcasts, Apple, Google, Spotify, you name it, Hero Movie Podcast, and we'll see you guys next time.